Hello, my name is Christopher and today I'm going to show you how to get Duck DNS working on Home Assistant. This makes it to where uh, if you have a, a IP that constantly changes or when you reboot your router or anything on your ISP, your ISP is going to allocate you a new IP address from the IP pool. But if you have a static IP, you don't need to do this and you can just put your static IP inside of the DNS and it'll just work. But so this makes it to where you install server software like DuckDNS on your local side and then it uses the token on DuckDNS to send the, your IP address to DuckDNS. It, it, it updates the domain records on yourname.duckdns.org. It updates the domain's IP address on there. Then makes it to where you can CNAME record your uh, DuckDNS domain to another domain and then that makes it to where you can have any domain you want just C named to DuckDNS. Uh, so th this makes it to where uh, you don't have to use DuckDNS at all. You can just use it a as a transport layer for your IP address and for your IP address always to be allocated to the DuckDNS. And if your IP changes for any reason then DuckDNS will update as long as you have the server software of DuckDNS working on Home Assistant or something like that. So today we will get the DuckDNS subdomain working and up and running and so you can CNAME record your domains to this and then you will have to open up your port of, of 80 or 443 on your router and then direct all the that traffic to your local side of Home Assistant or wherever you have a proxy running like Nginx proxy manager or anything like that. So uh, this uh, series is about getting home automation working and uh, from scratch. So I'm going to go over installing software to uh, get into home automations and everything like that. So if you like that, subscribe, comment, like, and let's get started. Okay, so I'll start on the Home Assistant homepage. I'm going to go down to Settings on the bottom left. Then I'm going to go to Add-ons right here. And then Add-on Store down here. And then you'll see DuckDNS in the official add-ons. And I'm going to Install. And you can turn on Watchdog, so if the container fails for any reason, it just turns back on, or tries to. Um, so, I'm going to go over to the configuration, and you're going to need to go to DuckDNS now, and sign in, and um, create a domain, and then you put your token in, and then you can accept the terms for the um, SSL. I'm going to go over to DuckDNS now. So you're going to put your subdomain in here, whatever you want, and then you're going to add domain right here. And then it's going to be down here to where you can see your subdomain and you can see your home IP address. And then, um, so you're going to get your token right here. And then um, you're going to put this subdomain into here so it's gonna be so once you put that in and then you're gonna have to get your token and then you're going to uh, accept the ter terms of you for let's encrypt and then you'll just go down here and press save so once you put your configuration in there, your token, everything like that, and save it, you can press start right here. And over in the logs, um, you'll see that it's doing everything and um, your, your IP address uh, will um, say a no change or changed or whatever. So so it'll update it on the DuckDNS side. And then whatever your duck dns domain is you can go to it and see if it uh goes to your router 
more than likely it will. Once it does that, you'll know it's set up and ready to CNAME to. So I just want to go over how DuckDNS works in the back end, in case anybody is curious. So it's going to create a log file to log any uh, types of errors. Then it's going to uh, create a response right here. It's going to silence it. Then it's going to show errors if any errors happen. It's going to wait a maximum of 60 seconds. Then it's going to create the URL. So it's going to add your subdomains, uh, the other part before the dot dns.org, uh, the com comma se separated list. So it's going to uh, add your token that you put inside of Home Assistant. This is your API token. And then you will leave the IP blank because uh, Duck DNS will um, de detect it on their end, the IP that uh, this request is sent from. And then if the response is okay, it's gonna update the IP and show you a date of when it was updated. If the response is bad, it's gonna say something went wrong. It's gonna set the date and it's gonna give you a response of this, whatever, whatever the error response was. Then it's gonna log it to this file right here that's gonna create, it's gonna log it there. So, oh, um, the Chrome tabs. This is to where it's gonna do it every five minutes. And uh, so, duckdns.sh, and then it's gonna sleep for a random amount of time. So, that's how it works. So that's how to get a DuckDNS subdomain set up and makes it to where if your public IP address on your home changes for any reason, you reboot your router or anything, uh, then it will update on DuckDNS's side and then uh, you will have a little bit of propagation time between the update, but um, you shouldn't uh, lose a connection, but you will go to your normal domain and you'll see name it to DuckDNS.org, your, your subdomain, and then it will uh, make it to where if your IP changes for any reason, like I said, it will update and that domain will always direct to the dot .dns, uh, the, your home IP. So also on the uh, dot .sh, it's run every five minutes and then it sleeps for 60 to 289 seconds before it runs again. And that, that dot .sh uh, updates your IP address. Now, DuckDNS does not work with IPv6 because AWS load balancers do not detect IPv6. So as far as I know, it does not work. Um, so, uh, so if you need any support for anything to do with this video, you can join the Big Bear community or you can comment down below and I'll be glad to help you as much as possible. And um, stay tuned for more tutorials.